Now, I want you to think about the adult deer that are currently on your property, the ones that you saw last fall when you were hunting. What they saw this year at Northern Latitudes, in Northern Minnesota especially, they saw the worst winter that they have had in their lifetime. They have never seen a winter like this. If they are two years old, three years old, four years old, five years old, or older, they have not seen a winter like this. With the snow cover, with the length of it, with when it started, this was not a good situation for them. Today we're gonna to show you some signs and symptoms that your habitat might reveal in the spring that will show you you're not necessarily helping your deer herd to get through its stress period as well as you could. We'll also show you some things that you can do, often simple things, that will help shorten up those stress periods. Stick with us, we're gonna show you those today here at Habitat Pro's Home 40 in Northern Minnesota. All right, so here's one of the major signs that you can look for on your property. You know, this happens to be an Eastern red cedar, which should not be food for deer. And it is pretty well stripped. You can see what it's supposed to look like. This was a nice mature one. And this is pretty common along this tree line that is a combination of spruce and Eastern red cedar on the shelter belt for the farm here. But you can see what they've done. This is where they've congregated. You can tell by all the droppings. And they were just here simply because this is the south side of the tree line. And look at that. Where there wasn't a lot of snow, so they were able to walk. But they absolutely destroyed the eastern red cedar. Which will come back, but they were struggling. And this is where they were laying for the last two months of winter. And they got up, had nothing to eat, so they ate something that shouldn't be food. That's one of the signs that your deer herd doesn't have enough browse. Here's another browse line. This on Norway pine or red pine. Those are 3 8 inch diameter twigs that were just buzzed off. You can see there it's all the way along here this whole line that was planted by the previous owner. I'd never recommend white pine. White pine are food, that's for sure. If you plant white pine, you're asking for it. You'll have to bud cap them and that may not even work if deer are starving. They can see here, they were stripping off needles, buds, anything they could. And this isn't even a desirable species. So very similar to the red cedar we saw up front. All right guys, I apologize for the wind up here in the highest elevation. But I needed to show you another thing to pay attention to. Notice that is northwest. That's where winter sends all of its weather from. So right here in the crown of this hill, going up to the crown of that one, you can see that it blew the snow off, but then it dumped it right here. This was a huge drift. The kids built a couple of forts in here. This was just massive. And this is what you need to know on your property. Where does my snow drift into? And that is definitely going to change over time. Because as you add in things like screening, switchgrass, those are snow catchers. You're going to want to make sure that you keep track of where your snow melts first versus where it drifts in and takes the longest. Because now on these crowns, what you can see from the little tinge of green coming is we have fall rye green that was in our food plot system on purpose here to make sure that right away in the spring in Minnesota, knowing that this field crown dries off first, gets growing first, thaws out first, we will have green growth and they'll be all over it. So what would be good up here if it wasn't rye in your annuals? Uh, you could have a clover plot, you could have a seclusion plot with chicory and clover, you could have some alfalfa in here. Anything that pounds out of the ground right away in the spring is what you want to have on these areas that clear themselves of snow first. And you want to stay away from areas that drift in. Alright, there's another major sign that you are not helping your deer through their stress periods. You can see there's next to no activity in there because that is fully mature forest. Full of shade, 3.30 in the afternoon. 
This is not a situation that deer are going to be able to get anything out of. So they travel pretty much straight through it. The only trails are those that are along the lake because there's no so snow on that south facing hillside and that's where their only browse is. So areas that are completely unused by deer are signs that you are not maximizing your ability to reduce the stress period on your property. Okay, now here's another sign that I often see on properties where a chainsaw has not touched the timber for a while. Notice here we do have a lot of saplings that are coming up that are browse worthy. This one just happens to be right along the trail to the food plot. But if you have a property where there aren't many short trees for them to browse on, you're going to get browse bushes like this. This is a green ash and it's supposed to be a single tall tree, but this has not been able to grow because deer have just continued to hammer it. And this is very common on properties where a chainsaw has not been in a long time. Areas that look similar to that woodlot right over there. If we went through the edge of those and we found a tree on the edge that was short, it would probably look similar to this. So be looking for browse bushes. And if you have nothing but things that look like this, you definitely need to drop the canopy and get more sun to the ground. There's our trail coming across. Now right here, what I noticed is there's browse everywhere on these little twigs right here. But I'm also noticing that this is a 45 degree southwest facing slope that already has some greenery showing through it. So what I can do right here is I can let these little twigs keep on growing, which, uh, you know, deer are never going to let that go. Those are basswood right there. There's some more basswood. They're just buzzing those off right here. You can see they're buzzing these off as well, wherever they can reach them. But right here, what I can do is kill the grass and put in anything clover-wise that will get going right away in the spring. Again, this is right next to a drifted in area, so I've paid attention to what thaws out first. And I paid attention to where do I get, see that's just right there, it's already thawed out. So where do I get my thawed out topsoil first? Well, that's where I can put in a small little nugget of a perennial food plot that can get my does and bucks off and running here. And it's directly adjacent to a hinge cut bedding area right near the swamp that is out of the Northwest wind. All right, so again, paying attention to where does the snow leave first, on the crowns and on the south facing slopes. This right here has the base of brassicas, but then is full of winter wheat and fall rye. And we're at March 20th. And this is all green. I can feel it squishing under my feet. Just a thick carpet of rye right here. So this is definitely helping them right now. You can see all the way along that south facing slope in the food plot. Make sure that your annuals include fall rye, winter wheat, stuff that comes booming out of the gates in the spring. And then one thing, that shows you you really need stuff and your habitat might be lacking is that these corn stalks were all complete when the snow was out here, when the deer were out here all winter. What I mean by that is they, it looked like corn going into winter and then the snow hit and we got around to February and March and deer just started eating off the corn stalks. Not getting much out of them, but it was something and they had nothing. So this is again telling me that in that stress period, February and March, I guess I'll continue to plant some corn, of course, but I mainly need to fix my habitat because you can see that all that corn right there that was 
six feet tall is a foot tall, all the corn stalks browsed off. Looks like cattle were in here. Okay, one final piece here. Look to your northwest, to your winter exposure. How many layers do you have between the pounding winter weather and your best food and bedding? Do you have layers of cover between the northwest exposure, which is that way, and where your deer habitat needs to be? So what you don't see right now is down on the edge of that swamp, all the way around it, I have a line of willow trees that will hopefully be fast growing and hopefully the deer don't find them early and keep them short. And then coming up the slope, I have two different bands of evergreens that are of course covered in snow right now. And then coming up this way, we're starting to layer in switch grasses we have prickly ash band right here that we're encouraging by killing the grass underneath it. And then there's another band of switch there. And then this little food plot right here is gonna be another patch of spruce trees right there, right next to that berm in the field, which is switch grass, gonna be all the way along there. So you've got to try to layer in your screening, not only for any viewing from the outside, from hunters and neighbors so the deer feel more comfortable but also just from your northwest exposure all right guys the one final piece that i'd like to mention is working with neighbors because as you saw my neighboring woodlots here do not support any kind of herd management that is beneficial to deer they're around they walk through but it's going to take some education often on your part if you want to be proactive in getting your deer through the stress period Bottom line is if you have big timber, you got to cut some down. It's just what has to be done. And oftentimes in this day and age where we don't use wood for heat, it's very difficult to get people to understand the fact that leaving trees stand forever until nature knocks them down is not necessarily the best thing for the forest, for the wildlife in that area. The other piece that you might be able to educate them on there is the more food they have in the woods, the less time they spend up in the yard eating arbovitas, spruce, eastern red cedar, garden plants, landscaping plants, and things of that nature. Granted, you're never going to stop deer. Deer are going to be deer and they're going to do what their habits have taught them. But if there's poor habitat out in the timber where they want to be away from people, they're definitely going to spend more time up in your world, in your business, in your landscaping and gardens. Hopefully some of that is useful to you guys. Um, saw a lot of stuff today. I see a lot of stuff every spring when I go on my property tours and all of it boils down to shortening up those stress periods for deer, shortening up those times when they're really struggling. And then of course, just the simple fact of getting them out of those stress periods healthier, meaning they can get to fawn production and antler production quicker, which is kind of what we're hoping to see in the fall. So if you need help with that, give me a call. This is Jake Lowe, the Habitat Pro. We are in Northern Minnesota. Get out and enjoy creation, guys. God bless.